Good morning, Queen Creek. We're sitting here, standing here at Desert Mountain Park, one of the town's beautiful parks here. My name is Adam Robinson. I serve as recreation manager for the town of Queen Creek. And I'm just here enjoying my peanut butter, peanut butter cup. There's so much good stuff in here, I, I don't even know what it all is. From Cold Stone Creamery. So we want to say thank you to them for this morning. It's never too early for ice cream. But I'm also here with... I'm Brad Greer. I'm a recreation coordinator for the town. Um, I also help oversee our park ranger program. I'm eating my sweet cream with chocolate chip cookie dough. This has been a staple of my life for a long time. I love ice cream. It's like one of the food groups in my life. So I'm enjoying this ice cream here with Adam. Nice, breakfast of champions. All right, so one of the things we wanna definitely remind you of is they got my I Count 2020 glasses is make sure you fill out your census. Good catch, Constance. All right, so today we wanted to talk a little bit about the parks and the trails and the park rangers and a lot of what a lot of what's going on here in town in terms of the parks and trail system. So we're gonna let Brad kick it off with some uh, information about the rangers. All right, so I've been with the town about 18 years and uh, many, many years ago, I was asked to help start up our park ranger program. And so it's been great to, to kind of be here and see the, the town grow and see the parks and trails grow. Um, we've got a great team of park rangers here. We've got three full-time park rangers, which include a, a lead or senior ranger. Uh, I also help pitch in on some shifts. As, and then we also have two part-time park rangers. So we've got Ron Jones, Mitch Adair, we've got Marco Gonzaba, we've got Rob Kickert and Johanna Downs. So that, that's your team of park rangers. You probably see them out on the trails and in the parks. Um, they're always there to help you out and make sure you're having a good time with your families. We've enjoyed seeing everybody out enjoying the trails and, and being in the parks. That's one of the things that I, I enjoy the most about this job is seeing everybody uh, out enjoying the, their time together as families. And I get my family out here on the trail and, and in the parks as often as I can. I help coach them and, and it's really, it's, it's been a part of who I am. I, I grew up out here and so kind of just helping patrol and, and see everybody enjoy the parks is really a, a passion of mine. I also get to work with our youth sports groups, our partners that uh, help do different youth sports in the uh, in the area. So like Queen Creek Little League, Queen Creek Heat Softball, Santan Youth Football, and Arizona Soccer Club. I work with them to make sure that they have the fields that they need to, to make sure that their seasons go well. And uh, it's, it's really great to, to see them out helping kids stay active and, and enjoying themselves and learning a sport. Um, just a, a few things we want to talk about real quick while we're out here. We're here at Desert Mountain Park. This is one of my favorite parks. It's kind of got a little bit of everything. Uh, we've got the trail access right here behind us. You see folks that are out riding and um, walking their dogs or jogging. It's a really popular area. Um, a couple things we want to make sure you guys keep note of is uh, our leash law. You know, Arizona's got a leash law. If you're not in your own property or in your own backyard, you need to have your dog on a leash. And we've seen some uh, some instances where maybe things have happened because dogs weren't on a leash. And even though you might think your dog is safe close to you and, and you have them under control, we want to make sure that your dogs are on a leash at all times. Um, so that includes our parks and our trails. Also, one thing that we also uh, kind of have a hard time with or we're trying to educate folks is our ATVs and OHV use all along the trails. Um, we see a lot of folks that have golf carts or side-by-sides. Queen Creek, we love our toys, we get out, we enjoy them but they're not meant for our trails and in our parks, unfortunately. They're, they're made for certain areas within our state that uh, they're able to, to be ridden on. So we just want you to keep in mind that those types of motorized uh, vehicles are not to be on our trails or, or ridden within our, our parks on the sidewalks and things like that. Um, we, we really take that seriously. We've, as you can see, the trail's gonna be busy behind us as we, as we visit with you this morning, and we wanna make sure everybody's safe. And, we get a lot of calls about uh, people that are reckless or driving fast on the trails and, and we take that seriously. We work with our uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office to help uh, address those issues. And uh, so just make sure if you see anybody, give us a call. Our Park Ranger hotline is 480-358-3770. You can call that number anytime uh, to get a hold of park staff or park rangers that are on duty. 
and we can come out and address any issues that you might see in the park. So we want to help make sure you have an enjoyable time and that you stay safe and that we keep our parks looking beautiful. We get a lot of compliments uh, from, from folks all over. We had a tournament this last weekend from, uh, we had folks from California that were there and it was uh, remarkable to see how they commented about how beautiful our parks were. And they just love coming out to see the, the great work that our park staff does to keep them uh, safe, clean, and green as we, we call it. So uh, I just love working for the town and, and working with all of our staff. And um, Adam, why don't you tell us a little bit more about maybe why it's great to see folks out on the trails and in the parks, especially kind of during this, this rough time. Awesome, thank you. That's a great segue into what I get to talk about, which is just what Brad was talking about leading into um, making sure that we stay connected as a community through this COVID-19 times and through the stay at home orders and just as we keep ourselves and each other and the community safe. But how can we still stay connected and get out there? Well, I think the number one way is the one thing that so many more people are taking advantage of now and that is the trail system. You can get out, you can be active, um, walking, running, biking, uh, even if you have a horse riding the horse through the Queen Creek Wash Trail, the Snoky Wash Trail, lots of fun. So as the town develops, one of our core um, focus focuses is to uh, create a community that's very connected. And so our trail system, um, one of the benefits of Queen Creek having two washes literally go right through the town is we're able to convert those into trails and truly connect the neighborhoods together. Um, connect town center and ultimately as we move forward we're looking to connect all aspects of the town the agritainment district where Schnepp Farms and Olive Mill is um, you can get off anywhere along the line and as businesses develop along them you can connect the businesses to our homes to our parks which is great for just your Wednesday evening practice if you live off the wash trail you can just cruise right over to most of our parks or right along the wash trail um, at our parks ourselves, uh, all of our parks are open. We do want people to remain safe and socially distant and be smart about it, but we also want you to get out and enjoy the parks, get out and enjoy the outside. Um, what I like to call stretch your eyeballs is spend all day inside. Your eyes farthest they're going to focus away is, you know, 18 feet at the farthest wall. You need to get outside and stretch them, see some green and, and see some other stuff. So just take just a second. I'm going to trade away. Don't eat my ice cream, please. Trade away my ice cream for this map, just to give a little perspective. And a little bit of heads up on the map is that it's a little bit older. I dug it out from the map closet this weekend to get ready for today. Um, as the town continues to grow and evolve and we continue to change and, and for the better and make plans, the, the maps will change. And so we're gonna get an updated one with all this new stuff that we're talking about today. Uh, but I just wanted to use the map to be able to give you a little bit of a visual of what's happening in terms of staying connected in the parks and recreation in the town and then also what we're working on. Um, I think the first thing I want to focus on is the trail system. So something that's kind of unique about Queen Creek is we require all of our new developments to install um, not only sidewalks along the outsides of the development but also a 10 to 15 foot multi-use trail. So that creates that connectivity even if you don't have a wash trail through neighborhoods where you can travel safely distance from the main roadway and get from neighborhood to neighborhood and just again connected in ways where you don't have to get you get in your car uh, just to drive next door or drive to the neighborhood next door but what I, I talked earlier about the wash trail system you have the Snoky wash and the Queen Creek wash and what those allow for is what we've done is we've started to improve trails along. So any of you have been on the trail system, you realize that it's paved trail most of the way. In most cases, the trail actually goes under the roadways through bridges and box culverts. And so if you're riding your bike or running or walking, um, for example, as you're coming where it Desert Mountain Park here, if you left the park and followed the trail right along, you, there's a bridge under Ocotillo, there's a bridge under Haas, and get you right up connected to Mansell Park. Mansell Carter Oasis Park. So it's just kind of a neat feature. Well, ultimately, our long-term goal in the town is to connect these two wash trails and create um, what we used to call the 11-mile loop. But since it adjusts over time, now it's about 13 miles total if it finishes up this way. 
which is neat because it's a half marathon. So Constance will be out there running a half marathon with us. I'll be on my bike behind, but not running. <laughs> um, but it's kind of fun. So right now, one of the projects we're working on is the design uh, to improve this section of the trail here and then the design of this section. So it's just, it extends us two more miles to get us closer to that loop. And that's just really fun uh, idea of being able to travel that distance safely and fun. You can literally ride with your whole family um, through the trail system and really feel safe about it, which is neat. Uh, Brad had talked about a little bit about safety. We were talking about trail etiquette. So when you're on the trails, um, you wanna make sure that you know how to best be safe. So when you're talking about your earbuds and listening to music, that's great, but you wanna be able to hear what's around you. When bicycles are coming through, they usually say, hey, on your left, and that means just move over to the right, and they can cruise through. When equestrians come through, you wanna make sure you step aside or let them through, um, and just kind of enjoy that aspect of Queen Creek culture, which is kind of cool. Um, and then briefly, I'll go over the park system. A lot of you are, Noticing that um, you know a lot of the park names are over here in this section. We already have Desert Mountain Park, Mansell Carter Oasis Park is built, Founders Park is built, Future Parks. The next one that we're working on design for is actually um, Queen Creek Sports Complex or what we call East Park. It's actually right behind Barney Family Sports Complex, that piece of property. And it was called Queen Creek Sports Complex because focuses on sports fields. We have a lot of baseball, softball fields, a lot of multi-purpose fields, and of course, we'll have a, a, an amazing play area and all of the courts, tennis, pickleball, basketball, and otherwise. Um, as we're working right now through that design process, just keep your eye on our Facebook pages for the town, both the main one and the recreation one. You can be involved in, um, in the design process, in the public input process. And then ultimately, we are we have future parks of Sossaman Cloud, Desert Wells Park on this side of town. And in our master plan, we're looking potentially for a park in this, this section of town as well. And Hey Adam, so I know with Facebook Live, we've got potentially some questions coming in um, and hopefully some additional questions coming as we go. But it looks like Ashley has asked a question. So she's saying, thank you so much for sharing some great information. Um, and she's curious what both yours and Brad's personal favorite park amenity is. Wow, I'm gonna let Brad go first because I got a lot of run through. Okay. Right I think uh, I got four boys so uh, I've spent a lot of time coaching them in different sports. And so I think uh, Desert Mountain Park is my favorite. It's got the mature trees that we're sitting under, standing under here, a lot of shade. And it's just got a little bit of everything. So you've got ball fields and the multi-purpose fields. So I think probably the multi-purpose fields here at Desert Mountain are my favorite just because I've spent a lot of time personally there with my family. And uh, we've, we've had a lot of fun and, and uh, won a few games and, and had victory and and felt defeat. So I think those are all like life lessons learned there and, and kind of help have a little personal touch to me. Awesome. I needed you to go on longer. There's too many favorite parts of our parks here. I love Founders Park because of it's been around so long. The trees are not only mature, they're huge. And because it was developed earlier, they're different types of trees. Um, we have the old school state skate park that the kids love at Founders Park. And then Desert Mountain Park has been here since about just before I got here. When I got here, it was brand new. It's only been open a year. And I've seen it kind of grow along. Um, but i got to be honest, I, I think Mansell Park's playground is probably my favorite park. Selfishly a little bit because I got to play a role in working to design and build that playground. But also because... Our focus for that whole play area was inclusiveness. And so well, I feel really good about the fact that the playground, the splash pad, that whole play area at Manson Park um, is very inclusive. So all people can come and play and have a good time and enjoy themselves, be able to share. We did have the partnership with Banner Ironwood and their donation, their significant donation to help us uh, put in the uh, rubberized surfacing through the whole playground, which means that Anybody of any abilities can traverse the whole thing. We have different play pieces that um, are, they're, they're fun for everybody. Just go there, you watch everybody play, but they're specialized for 
uh, the folks that that may have special needs and so you can get them you notice we do have the tower there but the whole playground and play area isn't focused on how high can you climb because we wanted to make sure that we can interact the play with, with kids and adults of all abilities so most of our play is interactive and fun and moving and so there's a lot of thought went into that to ensure that the Twin Creek community can get in and be, um, be play together again going back to our theme of staying connected we really want to connect the community and, and the parks and trails are really a, a big focus of that for us especially during coronavirus time when this is all over a year from now whenever it comes um, and, and our big special events like trunk or treat stuff like that come back those have a huge ability to connect the community because so many people come out and interact together but until we have that time again our parks and trails are, are, are a great alternative and as you can see so many folks taking advantage of it as they cruise by and whiz by behind us I see uh, Constance keeps waving at folks, and I'm fighting the urge to turn around and, and call them in. Uh, Brad, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we just open it up for any questions? Or No, it's just going to get to this uh, cold stone here in a little bit before start, it melts so too much. There. Yeah. I like my melt that I'm watching it melt, getting kind of excited too. <laughs> Um, so just to kind of recap what we talked about, parks and trail system, the park rangers are out there actively keeping us safe, uh, making sure that folks are following kind of the guidelines and rules of the park so that everybody can have a great experience. Oh, we have we have question. a we have another question yeah. coming in. Um, what trails are available for horses? Yeah, it's a good question because a lot of it depends on your your particular horse's abilities and um, uh, personality is the wrong word but I think you'll know what I mean some horses are able to just be amongst people and cruise right through a big crowd and, and some aren't so much so the best places for equestrian users on the trails is in the wash system so in the wash areas the equestrian users come down to the bottom of the wash and go along the sandy bottom and where occasionally they have to cross they might come up to the top and um, or going under a bridge and so for the most part, they're wide open spaces by themselves. One thing we want to work, look out for, especially on the bridge areas, is where our runners and bikers and equestrians all kind of meet in the same place. And that's just where you want to stay aware. And if you see that equestrian coming, just kind of give them room, let them get on by, and then continue your day. Otherwise, there's also, you know, going back to creating the, the trail system for developments that along, you know, like, um, Haas Road or Signal Butte Road, a development comes in, they put the sidewalk in, but they also put in a multi-use trail, which is usually like a decomposed granite compacted trail that's further off the road, it's not concrete or asphalt, and so that's something that if your horse is able to ride alongside a major road, that would be somewhere you can go as well. And Adam, I'll add, here at Desert Mountain Park, we've got a, a dedicated equestrian trailer parking area, so if you've got uh, maybe you live a little further out and you can't just ride and get access to the trail system. You can trailer up, come here, park uh, at the park in that dedicated equestrian lot. And it's got enough room for trailers to move around and, and unload. So we, we get a, a lot of folks that use that. It's really popular for uh, the equestrian group. All right. Yeah. You can also park at Worship Park and Equestrian Center, access the Sunoki Wash Trail. Um, and then eventually, we talked about when we connect the 13 miles of trails, it'll be an amazing track for horses, bicyclists, um, walkers, and joggers. We saw some joggers come by earlier, and Brad's like, "Oh yeah, I see them. They run insane distances every day." And at first, I thought maybe I, you know, I could go run, but not with those folks. Um, we do real quick, just because it's been a big issue lately, is electric vehicles. Uh, they're starting to get more and more popular. Currently, the town ordinance, park rules, and it's all about safety, is to keep all motorized vehicles off of the park and out of the trails. And so that includes electric golf carts. That currently does include electric scooters or electric bikes. Um, we'll work as, as things evolve. We'll work to mix them into our parks. But right now, the focus is on ensuring the best experience for everybody and safety for everybody as well. So it looks like we have one more question popping in. Yep, one more question. What type of animals will we see along the wash? Oh, that's one for Brad. 
variety, yeah, our, our washes are uh, what we'd call riparian habitat. So there's, uh, there's quite a few wildlife in there. You'll see uh, coyotes, a lot of cottontail, uh, rabbit, jackrabbits are down there. We've also got lots of different snakes. Uh, we'll see king snakes, uh, rattlesnakes, the western diamondback is very popular in this area and they, they enjoy being down in the wash. Um, but those are, those are the most of the ones you'll see. A lot of rabbits. You'll see rabbits crossing the trail all the time. So just, uh, if you're riding your bike, just know that they're going to dart across and uh, they don't really care who you are or what you're doing. So just be careful. But yeah, coyotes are out there. Just keep your distance. Um, they don't want anything to do with you. So just uh, stay away from them. Don't feed any of the wildlife. Uh, let them be. Uh, they'll, they'll stay away from you and uh, kind of leave you alone. Okay, looks like we have another question coming in uh, from Laura. She says, any idea when the 13 mile trail would be completed? Laura, that's a great question. Um, from my perspective, as soon as humanly possible. There are uh, a few um, outlined factors. Some of the trail system is still, some of that 13 mile that we have outlined is still um, private property. So the town either works with property owners or works to purchase that property in the long term. Um, we have, <coughs> Excuse me. Trail projects scheduled for the next uh, 10 years and within that um, current schedule, it's very loose, especially based on economic conditions, five or six years we should be able to connect the two um, trail systems and, and get that 13 mile loop pretty much finished up. A lot of it has to do with um, you know economic conditions, how quickly, you know, the more money comes in, the more we can build, the slower it slows down, we slow down too. Do you have another question or was that a... Not at this time. Thumbs up, all right. Um, well, I think we can wrap things up a little bit here. Again, my name is Adam Robinson, Recreation Manager. We have Brad Greer, Recreation Coordinator and Park Ranger Lead. We're out here enjoying our Cold Stone Creamery ice cream, which was amazing this morning. There is no better breakfast than the peanut butter and chocolate amazingness that I just ate. Uh, I already finished mine, unfortunately. Um, we want to not forget about the census. I count 2020. I'm sure you can't read that, but I can. They want to make sure that we get out there and complete the census. So many important reasons why. And then also, as we go through, we just want to make sure that you follow us on social media, follow us on Facebook, and all of the things. All right, so y'all have a beautiful day, and enjoy Queen Creek.